we want to work with uh, I, Lloyd and his team at IBM to try and exploit that data, both for situational awareness, but also in numerical weather prediction activities. Hi there, it's WAMC News Director Ian Pickus. And on this episode of the WAMC News Podcast, we learn about an expanded partnership between IBM and the University at Albany to explore climate and weather impacts. While through the school's Atmospheric Sciences Research Center, the two entities will focus on harmful algal bloom detection and prediction, winter road weather conditions, and wind power generation. My colleague Jim Lavoulis spoke with Lloyd Trinish, the chief scientist at IBM Research for Climate and Weather, and Chris Thorncroft, director of UAlbany's Atmospheric Sciences Research Center, about the effort. Thorncroft began by discussing the college's role. ASRC uh, has a, a long-standing uh, interaction with IBM, and we 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 study problems of uh, mutual interest, if you like. We work on uh, extreme weather, uh, as well as climate change, uh, weather impacts, um, renewable energy, just to name a few. Um, and um, so we have a number of scientists that uh, are interested in working on these problems together with IBM. We also have um, we, the, the New York State Mesonet um, that, it, uh, that is run out of uh, University of Albany. And um, this is a, an amazing resource that we want to exploit together um, for the benefit of various applications in the state. Just quickly, the New York State Mesonet is um, a, a network of weather stations across the state, 126 weather stations. Every county has at least one measuring everything you, you care about in terms of weather, temperature, wind, uh, humidity, snowfall, snow depth, uh, you name it. Uh, we, we measure it in the New York State Mesonet. And, th- and there are a number of other uh, more sophisticated measurements, which we may want to get into later, that uh, the Mesonet um, uh, that measures. And uh, we want to work with uh, I- Lloyd and his team at IBM to try and exploit that data, both for situational awareness, but also in numerical weather prediction activities. And as mentioned, Lloyd Trinish is the chief scientist at IBM Research for Climate and Weather. Lloyd, what about IBM's role in this project? How is it that that this company uh, is using you know things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, when it comes to to weather prediction forecasting? Well, um, IBM and IBM Research has had a long you know history you know related to uh, meteorology and. Uh, and especially for uh, business uh, applications. So, you know, looking at the problems that um, for weather sensitive uh, decision making from, you know, airlines to surface transportation to electric utilities, water utilities, insurance, and the list sort of goes uh, on and on. Um, and, um, and it's uh, an aspect of, uh, from an IBM perspective, is that. We are also one of the largest uh, commercial providers of weather information, you know, weather con- current weather conditions and, uh, and forecasts. Um, uh, that, uh, you know, and this really accelerated uh, when we uh, acquired the weather company a number of years ago. So you probably see some of our content you know, from a you know, commercial forecasting perspective on your smartphone uh, or on the television uh, stations in, uh, in the Albany area, uh, for example. But as you know, weather is a challenging phenomenon to uh, predict at the right level of fidelity for decision making. So we have ongoing you know, research activities on improvement in, uh, in uh, the weather models that drive these forecasts. And uh, data and techniques to work with the data are critical to that improvement. And so the partnership with uh, with Albany is sort of at the heart of uh, trying to h- increase the quality of the weather forecasts and enable uh, more reliable uh, decisions. You know, whether that's by individuals or by governments, you know, government agencies or, uh, or or by businesses. So by working together with uh, Chris and his team, you know, we will be able to uh, uh, evaluate our weather models to improve them and lead to, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, higher quality, uh, you know, information for everyone's uh, uh, benefit. And I understand that one of the areas of focus for this partnership will be a harmful algal bloom detection and prediction in lakes and reservoirs. I was wondering if you could detail for me how, for instance, would this partnership work in that case? How uh, would the folks at UAlbany 
work with the folks at U, uh, IBM to predict uh, you know, where these harmful algal blooms would form? This activity connects to a, a, a project uh, that IBM has with uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic and, um, and the Lake George Association, which we call the Jefferson Project. And our initial test bed is in the Lake George watershed. And so this work is focused on being able to uh, very precisely uh, monitor and predict uh, water quality conditions. And the Lake George watershed is ideal uh, for that, um, given its, uh, you know, how, how pristine it is you know, in terms of trying to understand the, the different mechanisms that lead to changes in water quality, including the formation of, uh, of algal blooms. So there's ongoing research uh, to do that, and we see strong connections to the weather, you know, as potential drivers for the uh, conditions when blooms can form, um, and how they, and, but also, uh, you know, how they might become more, uh, um, you know, uh, larger events that would lead to, uh, you know, toxic uh, uh, conditions. And so the uh, an important element of this is um, having you know, uh, highly detailed weather data. Um, uh, now, in the Lake George watershed, you know, we've deployed, you know, weather and other environmental sensors, but we also need to understand kind of from a, from a situational awareness perspective, you know, what are the weather conditions that feed into the watershed? And so as we expand, you know, to other watersheds in New York State, you know, to understand these conditions, this is where the mesonet becomes critical because it has, as Chris had outlined, has a comprehensive set of weather observations for the entire state and therefore relevant to any, any uh, lake watershed that, we're, that we need to understand more how they're being stressed uh, um, uh, you know, from a water quality perspective and the potential for uh, formation of, uh, of algal blooms. And if I can add, uh, yeah, that the the Mesonet sites are making wind are making measurements of wind in particular, which is relevant to this issue, uh, every five minutes. So those those they're every five minutes broadcast here, and we can use that for situational awareness. But also, uh, we will be interested in working with IBM more closely on how to get that data into numerical weather prediction models. So not only can we get the situational awareness, but we can actually have some sort of early warning system, ideally. Yes, and, and, you know, and that's one of the goals is, you know, not only to understand, once we better understand, you know, how the blooms form, then that can lead to uh, the capability to predict potential conditions, and then that becomes important, you know, to uh, warn the public for, uh, uh, you know, for periods of time when the water may not be safe, you know, or for when water is used for, um, you know, uh, for, you know, commercial purposes, agriculture, or, or drinking for that matter. I also understand that the Atmospheric Sciences Research Center at UAlbany has been uh, working on a U.S. Department of Energy project to deploy a buoy system to improve models for offshore wind generation. Lloyd, you mentioned the Jefferson Project, uh, working with Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute on Lake George. This buoy system field testing was done on Lake George and Oneida Lake and Seneca Lake. Um, Where does that project stand, and uh, what are the next steps for that? This is being led by uh, a couple of uh, scientists and researchers at the Atmospheric Science Research Center, and um, it's motivated by the fact that, uh, you know, given the interest in offshore wind, uh, we need more information about the weather conditions where those turbines will be deployed, both in terms of where those turbines should be placed, but also ultimately down the road, uh, how we actually run them. And so one of the important things that we need to do more of is, is measure the atmosphere in those regions uh, where we plan to deploy turbines. And um, that, that's a challenge. And uh, this was a DOE-supported effort, as you say, was, was, was tested in the lake. So we have a, a LIDAR system, uh, which is on a buoy and uh, moves up and down when we have waves. Uh, and so we need to take account of that when we're actually measuring remotely the wind above the ground. And so there's more testing to be done. And uh, ultimately, uh, the goal is to deploy some of these, uh, t- this technology uh, out off the, off the coast of uh, New York, New York Bight. And, you know, and just to follow up on that, one aspect of that information, 
you know, in terms of uh, the, the wind patterns and conditions uh, above the above the Earth's surface in the lower part of the atmosphere, you know, we see evidence that there's coupling between that, those aspects of the weather and and how a, a lake responds, and so that could then have a connection to. Um, you know, to the conditions for uh, algal blooms. So they, these kinds of fundamental information have uh, multiple, you know, ap- applications. So in this case, renewable energy and water quality. Well, those are all the main questions uh, that I had. I'm not sure if either of you wanted to add anything regarding this partnership between U Albany or IBM that uh, that I didn't touch on. I think um, just just generally, I think. Um, um, this is a this is like a, a dream team, if you like. I think uh, bringing together the technology and expertise of IBM researchers and their experience with uh, um, similar talents uh, and the data data streams that we can provide uh, at ASRC through the New York State Mesonet, um, and also our Center of Excellence, which works with uh, which is a state funded entity to promote research with uh, the private sector. I think. We, we're looking forward to working together on solving a lot of um, important problems, both in terms of we, we talked about algal blooms, but there's also things about weather, weather, road weather, uh, flooding. Um, I think uh, I look forward to doing more work with IBM and Lloyd's team um, to tackling many of these important issues that face the state. And let me add also that the state um, and the Northeast in general um, has seen an increased frequency of extreme weather, particularly in terms of rainfall over the last decades. And so we need to be prepared for all, all sorts of extreme weather. And so by improving our capacity to improve weather forecasts uh, through our research, I think could have a very serious benefit um, for, the, for the state. And one of the things from the you know the IBM perspective, you know, we're you know so you know also quite excited about you know the the uh, uh, the research that we can do together. But w- another uh, uh, element is that some of our uh, IBM's uh, clients have uh, some complex um, uh, business problems that are um, you know driven by by uh, weather uh, conditions and. Uh, one aspect of this is that we hope to bring um, some of that complexity into these uh, into the research, you know, to enable the uh, what we learn to have practical benefit, you know, for uh, you know for people or you know or or for businesses. Um, another aspect is that you know, given you know uh, unique um, you know uh, data such as from the Mesonet, some of what we expect to learn and apply in New York State, you know, we feel very strongly can be relevant. To uh, uh, other parts of the U.S. and 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 beyond, and so that's um, you know another element that um, you know that uh, you know with the IBM um, you know connection, since you know, we we do have customers uh, and research labs uh, uh, you know outside New York, and we can bring you know some of that uh, to bear as well, you know in terms of um, you know building on what we learn as part of this uh, uh, collaboration. And if I could add one more thing, I mean, representing the University at Albany here and uh, the academic mission, this is a this this, is, this offers amazing opportunities for students um, to get experience working on real life issues, uh, working with uh, a great company like IBM. It's it's just a fantastic fantastic experience for for, for students. Yeah, and certainly from the IBM perspective, uh, nurturing uh, talent uh, that you know can contribute to, with uh, companies like ours. Uh, is uh, you know is the the other aspect uh, you know of uh, of working together, so uh, you know helping to create a uh, uh, you know a more uh, vibrant and um, sophisticated uh, you know workforce that recognizes the challenges of these kinds of problems uh, and um, and the you know and the importance of uh, being able to solve them. All right, thanks to my colleague Jim Lavoulis for that interview. That does it for this episode of the WAMC News Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, I'm Ian Pickus.